Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Morning Metaphysical Report. Today is January 28th, 2020, and my name is Lysander Xanthus. And I am the magical voice in the background known as the Kitchen Witch. So, welcome. Today we will be talking about the day's astrology, numerology, and other information for you to use in your spiritual practice today. We will also be going through a grounding, healing, and psychic protection for you to utilize. This is important. These are important things to do each day uh, to continue your growth as a spiritual practitioner, whether you're a beginning, a beginner, <laughs> or a professional. <laughs> uh, Good morning, everyone. Hello. Hello. Let's just take a minute. Let's start over. Hello. Good morning. So, everyone take a deep breath. And release. Do the gesture. Just. We're going to do a quick grounding together. So. Follow along, I will also be using my energy to assist you in your release. <sighs> so, imagine yourself inside of a bubble. This is your aura. Now, imagine a pipe gently attached to the bottom of your aura. That leads deep into the earth. For the sake of simplicity, Envision your bubble full of a dark colored energy. We're going to drain this energy out, so we're going to watch the level lower, a bit like water draining down. Imagine or intend this energy releasing and draining into the earth. I'd like to exhale as I release. And use my hands as you can see. We release all energy that does not belong to us, that is foreign to us. We now release all energy that is not serving our highest good. We now release all energy that is not serving our goals. We now release all energy that is not serving our spiritual path. We release from every layer of our aura, every chakra, every part of our body, all blocks, relationships, situations, uh, patterns, toxic attachments that we are now ready to release. Continue to watch it go down and out. Once you see the last of it go through the bottom of your aura, imagine or intend the drain disappearing and your aura being whole and complete. Now, envision the pipe just kind of curling down away from you into the earth and dissipating. All right, so we have grounded. I'm now going to utilize a singing bowl to stimulate and awaken your energy so that it is in a more receptive place to take in all the information, guidance, and healing today.
Welcome to today, everyone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> everyone, take a sip of your coffee or everyone, a drink of choice. It's time for coffee. Shout out to Have Sandy. Have you blessed it? Shout out to Sandy this morning for uh, mentioning that she enchants her coffee. Uh, everyone, you should enchant your coffee. If you drink coffee in the morning, coffee is an abundance and prosperity plant. Enchant that coffee. Get that abundance. Put that pep in your step. Coffee. We are. I think we should sell coffee. You know, we talk about it so much. bless your coffee. You just saw me do it, but I'll explain a little. You can just hold it between your hands and set an intention. Or uh, what I drew over it was a pentagram. It's a star in a circle. And uh, that was it. Imagine filling it with light. An intention. Give your coffee an intention. My intentions are usually something like, I am strong, brave, calculated, forward-minded, forward-thinking, in the right step with life, bringing in the abundance. Abundance is always Abundance. I usually do a little dance called the abundance when I do it. Abundance. Abundance. <laughs> Everyone should do an abundance. I got that from a good friend. She's, she's the greatest. She always makes me laugh. Abundance. All right. Now it is time for our astrology of the day. Astrology, just a reminder to everybody if you're new here. Thank you. You and I forget just because I'm in the habit of just doing it now. This is not a horoscope for individual sun signs. I am talking about where all the planets are currently located in relation to the 12 star constellations that we know is the zodiac and the energy that is present uh, in our world at this time that we are all affected by. For those of you who are familiar with your birth charts, you can correlate, make additional correlations between what's happening in the sky and your own star alignment to see how it will affect you personally. But the general where the planets are is important and you don't need your birth chart information to uh, utilize this information. Right. So uh, let us begin. The Sun and Mercury are in Aquarius. So wherever the Sun is that the qualities of that sign are being strongly emphasized and illuminated for us at this time. And when you have the sun and Mercury together, the sun is illuminating the mind our, and our communications and how we express ourselves. So what is being highlighted is us as individuals and our place in the greater community, through my own hair in my face, uh, our, greater, our place in the greater community, the greater scheme of things, whether it's your a group of friends, your school, your company, your town, or the universe, your place in a greater whole rather than you relating to other individuals. It's also about innovation and finding new ways of doing the same things, trying different things, and most of all sharing with others, with this greater community, whether it's our knowledge, our humor, our kindness, kind of pouring out. That's why the image is of pouring water out. Mm -hmm. So this is what's highlighted and mentally that's where the mental focus is and how we express ourselves to others and in our communications. Uh, the moon is in Pisces, making us feel even more watery. <laughs> um, so we may be feeling more emotionally sensitive, more psychically sensitive. And in a place where we really desire depth and sincerity from ourselves and from others at this time. You might be having intuitive or emotional dreams. 
Uranus in Taurus asks us to go beyond our comfort zone. Our comfort zone may actually be quite uncomfortable right now. The A lot of things that we're tolerating are somehow a lot more intolerable lately and uh, will become more so for as long as Uranus is in this position. Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto are in Capricorn and they are strongly encouraging us to shed these things that are no longer serving us, that have kind of expired, whether it's relationship situations, anything that has kept us from being our real, powerful selves. Opportunity and transformation is available to us if we can uh, be the leader of our own lives, take charge, be self-sufficient, don't wait for others and for the situation to change. Mars and Sagittarius gives you a strong push in all that. Uh, sorry, I mind kind of wandered off for a moment. Avoid the tangent. Finish this astrology. You can do it. We have a strong drive to exploring the possibilities for ourselves and discovering new possibility and potential for ourselves, our lives, and our situations. That kind of drive of, I want more. And finally, Venus and Neptune are in Pisces as well, so we are seeking that depth and sincerity in our relationships, especially our romantic ones, but we may have to contend with fantasy and illusion. So not seeing the person as they really are, having um, these ideas about how things are going to work out when it's just not the case. So if you can push through all your own false ideas, you can get to that sincere connection. Also, we are more connected to our intuition at this time. Awesome. Let's take a look at the aspects. All right. Interesting. Aspects. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> it's okay, darling. I enchanted my coffee this morning, but I haven't drunk it yet. That's the that's the problem. Take right a now. drink. <sighs> I'm talking to the beautiful people. All right, so let's talk about some aspects. The moon is aspected to a lot of things right now. So it is, oh, wow, okay. So the moon, Uranus, wait, no, sorry, excuse me. The moon, Neptune, and Venus are all in conjunct together right now. What that means is that they're aligned, essentially, are in the same degree. Yeah, you can kind of see that. And uh, they're all in Pisces. So all this is kind of layering together. So internally, our internal selves, our love life, our intuition and emotions are kind of layered in a feels cake. Oh man, that explains a lot. Uh, just a strong, overwhelming internal need in your inner heart for love and a deep, authentic, emotionally passionate or intense connection and feeling a kind of rightness in your intuition or a pull in your watery intuitive self but perhaps again struggling because it's something inherent in Pisces in the water element with that idea of illusion and fantasy so for some of you you'll be contending with that and others you'll just be in the depths of the water so it's like diving way in when it comes to love and the heart neptune is also a bit fantasy oriented so be mindful that you're not living with rose colored glasses or in or realize that this is a honeymoon period for some of you um not seeing the whole picture etc i think you get the idea all right. So the moon is also sextile to Saturn and Pluto. This is just getting ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Just listening to all these planets tell me about how emotional I am. And I'm like, oh, God, come on. <laughs> so obviously, because the moon, Neptune, and Venus are in conjunct, they are also sextile to Saturn and Pluto, but we'll just kind of talk about it as one thing. <laughs> so you have all that emotion and it's playing with this shedding. So 
you're also being confronted with that shedding aspect and uh, squared with Mars and so finally it's just sort of like exploring possibilities not really conducive to staying in these deep waters all right uh, sorry, it's just there's a lot of aspects and they are important. They do matter. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, I feel like we should spend more time focusing on the aspects and less on the rest of the planets. The aspects are what really emphasize the point. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I guess I'll find a different way of doing it. Uh, the aspects don't make sense if you don't know where the planets are, though. It's cool. Anyway, you do what you need to do, man. Move on to the numerology. Uh, so this is a one day. Like all one days, this one is about new beginnings. For this new beginning, we're focusing on the heart. If you're in an unhappy relationship, this is the day to give an ultimatum. You deserve the best. If things are not right in any of your relationships, be empowered to say something about it today. Whether it's your partner, a family member, or a friend, you may need to make yourself heard today. Uh, just some extra advice when you communicate. This is pretty challenging, but instead of focusing on blame, focus on your needs because behind everything we do and every hurt or anger or sadness we feel, there is a need that's not being fulfilled. So try to express heart to heart in that way. So yes, there is a focus on the heart, especially oh, yeah. with the Moon, Venus, Neptune. Yeah, no. you're you're in for a ride today, everybody. It's it's a very heartful one day. We've got all of these planets going on, and the Moon's just kind of emphasizing the bejesus out of the fact that you're thinking about your heart too much. So hopefully the crystal healing and the affirmation alleviate so, some of that. Remember the point of uh, having all this information is so that you are empowered to make proactive choices about how you want to go forward and to make the best out of each of your days. So any reading of this type is not setting your future in stone. No, absolutely not. Even at its most doomy sounding. <laughs> the idea is always for you to have the knowledge to take control and wield your own power. All right. And it is time for our healing. That's what I've been waiting for. Today we're working with rose quartz. This is a raw piece. The soothing energy of rose quartz fosters empathy, reconciliation, and forgiveness of others. Lowering stress and tension in the heart, it clears out anger, jealousy, resentment of others, and allows healing of heart issues and disease associated with holding on to such negative emotions. Excellent. You So those are some of the qualities of rose quartz. You will be experiencing its energy directly, of course. I find rose quartz is, in fact, quite emotionally healing. And even though it is what you could describe as a common stone, it is very powerful. It's a great bath crystal. We haven't used it that way yet. So, if you would like to receive this healing, just allow yourself to connect with the energy of this crystal. The last point I want to make is that opening the heart is important. Bitterness is one of the biggest blocks to the flow of the abundance and every good thing that you want to manifest for yourself. So the heart is a key. And I'll go ahead and begin this crystal healing now.
goes towards this gently shining a shimmering pink light through your aura. Rose quartz always wants to kind of hold us and lets us know we are safe. Now, of course, it wants to send its energy to your heart. dissolving blockages in the emotional layer. The focus on the arms and hands, which are symbolically where abundance and love flow. First, the left arm and hand, we are clearing and opening. Open your hand and just let it go. In our hands, we hold on to many things. Energetically, it often looks like holding on to black dirt. I empower you to receive. arm. Open your hand and let it go. You only hurt yourself when you hold on to things. Whomever or whatever you're angry with or resent with over doesn't suffer from you holding on to it. Just you. that you deserve better. Rose Quartz knows you deserve better. And I heal your ability to create. Spreading that flow of open heartedness throughout the rest of your being should feel like a gentle glow. Just a little clearing on the feet, they carry us on our path. Includes the healing with rose quartz. Let's sit a moment in this energy. Even if you are preparing for your day, take a moment, a few seconds, just a few seconds to pause and allow this to really integrate. I'm going to send some love quartz energy to my love over there. We are going to move into our affirmation. I always want your love energy. Crystal. I'm going to say this affirmation to you 
This is in time. This is another energy. Yeah. Oh, don't worry. I was going to tell people oh, you God. deserve your credit. This is an original affirmation by my fiance. And it was inspired by the energy of rose quartz. So while we're in this space, we're going to embrace this affirmation. I just want to read it to you first. Because I want you to hear the words and to focus on taking them in rather than being distracted by saying them. We will also say them together at the end. So this is, this was inspired, well, part of my fiance's inspiration. All right. I am worthy of all the love the universe has to offer. I deserve to be loved with respect and tenderness. I am open to being loved. I am worthy of all the love the universe has to offer. I deserve to be loved with respect and tenderness. I am open to being loved. I am worthy of all the love the universe has to offer. Open your heart. Open your heart. <laughs> I deserve to be loved with respect and tenderness. I am open to being loved. It's a great thing to do. Just I'm open to receiving all the love, whatever it else it is you want that the universe has to offer. Now, we're going to say this affirmation together three times. I am worthy of all the love the universe has to offer. I deserve to be loved with respect and tenderness. I am open to being loved. I am worthy of all the love the universe has to offer. I deserve to be loved with respect and tenderness. I am open to being loved. I am worthy of all the love the universe has to offer. I deserve to be loved with respect and tenderness. I am open to being loved. All right. I invite you to take this affirmation with you in your day. This concludes our affirmation. Not that I'm biased or anything, but I really like that one. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> All right. So next, we will be talking about our magic tip of the day. Woo! Magic tip of the day. I am going to write jingles for everything. Give me time. Give me time. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> You're like, great. So today's magic tip is about cards, tarot cards, oracle cards, etc. And what I would like to bring up is that cards are for more than reading. Uh, you can use your cards in spells, in rituals, in magic to place intentions in areas and spaces. Something very powerful I was doing for a while is that I selected uh, cards that represented something I wanted to manifest. I laid them on my altar and sure enough it came to be rather quickly like within a week. So kind of I just want to kind of expand your idea of what this tool can be used for. Now using them doesn't mean uh, damaging them or destructing the cards in any way. Uh, they, uh, you put energy into the cards when, we, when you read with them, so it's best to use the cards you actually read with. If you are doing a spell where you where it leads to the destruction of the card, I advise buying a copy of it. I know that for some of you that might be unthinkable. Or print a copy. Print a copy. Oh yeah, like if you can scan it. I, I have uh, a printer with a scanner, and when I use my tarot cards in spell work, I will scan the image print it out onto like cardstock and then use that. And I just 
carry the energy from the original card to my print. That sounds more cost effective if you have a scanner and printer. <laughs> Maybe don't have two decks worth. I mean, it's it is a thing. Having a, a paper copy of your your deck is not a bad idea for spell work, and it gives you the ability to write on them. Mm -hmm. Just put that out there. Yeah. Obviously, you can use the actual cards, but most people probably don't want to. So, um, yes. If you wanted a less expensive deck, the traditional Rider Weight is pretty inexpensive as a uh, destruction deck. Uh, for example, one of my favorite spells is a Pumpkin Prosperity spell, where you actually use an entire pumpkin. At the end of the spell, you either leave it in nature or you bury it, and you fill the inside with things you want to manifest. Obviously, if you put a card in there, the card's going to stay in the pumpkin. So, yes, magic to the tip of the day, cards are for more than reading. So, not just spells, but also filling a space or yourself with an intention. All right. So, speaking of cards, it is now time for our card reading of the day. Woohoo! $5 says the cards talk about love, too. Be prepared. Be prepared, everybody. <laughs> so, this is a reading I'm doing for all of you to give you insight and guidance into your day ahead. You may resonate with all of the reading or just parts of it. All right, so what deck? using today. Oh, uh, Chicoli. Chicoli got to talk a lot yesterday because I was doing readings for a friend of mine and uh, my fiance. Oh yes. About relationships. <laughs> that was very not fun. That was not a fun reading. It was, yeah. <laughs> it was good, but it was not, not fun. It was, it was positive. It was a positive reading. It was not fun. Very informative and so guiding. I'm not surprised that Chicole wants to talk some more. Let's see what she has to say to us today. Whatever it may be about. Make sure to put them in order today. <laughs> All right, so we have four cards. It's empty water. Yeah, so it's a six of swords and ace of cups. Yeah, I can see them. I just needed to double check because yesterday you handed them to me in the wrong order. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I was like, oh no! Two of cups. Mm -hmm. Not that way. Well, anyway. Uh, let's see, two of this. And Knight of Cups. Hmm. All right. There you go. Thank you. Fantastic. Alrighty. Here we are. Oh. Right. Yeah. Okay. Here we go, everybody. <laughs> so, Hope you're ready. This first part is the Six of Swords, and in this particular deck, this points to feeling injured and defeated and needing to withdraw to recover. So this could be something that has already happened or is going to. So in some situation or relationship, uh, you have failed or been defeated and are feeling very wounded. And so now it's time to leave the situation to recover in some way. That or you have just emotionally emotionally withdrawn. All right. Next is the Two of Cups. 
This card pertains to a partnership. Typically, it points to a discovering a new partnership with a like-minded person. This can be a business, romance, or otherwise, considering the nature of the reading, I would say most likely a personal connection. Thinking about the other cards. Well, I'll bring them all together after, so that's this card pointing out a specific relationship. This card says, talks about that there's a lot on your plate, you're juggling a lot of things, and I think it's in relation to this relationship. In this situation, you are trying to keep everything up in the air and balance and keep it going, and there's just so many things that you are bound to drop them all at some point. It suggests that you need to stop being so responsible for everything between you and this other person and set some things aside uh, and to recognize what things you are actually responsible for before you burn out and uh, everything falls around you. This is the Knight of Cups. So this is is describing the person. I feel like it's probably you, not the other person. You, sorry, I'm just thinking of the wording. It describes that you are fiercely passionate in the pursuit of a righteous cause and that you follow your heart. So this is kind of pointing to part the part of your nature that keeps you engaged in the situation. This is, think about how this relationship is not just about the other person, it's like a cause, or like needing to rescue them, or it's also about you and like feeling like you're a failure or you're responsible for saving this person or resolving this situation. And to recognize how your heart is being pulled, we've been talking a lot about feelings today and how our hearts are being engaged a certain way. So that is at play. Now, just to kind of recap all four together. Kind of helps me to look at them myself. I mean, they're on the screen. So, currently you're suffering a kind of uh, emotional withdrawal or wanting to, a need to leave to really recover and heal, feeling defeated in a relationship, most likely romantic, but could be another personal relationship of some kind with a relative or friend. And the burden and responsibility in the relationship are all on you. You're handling everything and it's actually too much. You're going to drop the ball. You're going to drop all the balls. It's not just one. So it's very important to be aware of that lopsided power dynamic, lopsided responsibility share between the two of you, and to set aside the things that are not truly your responsibility. Some things are, but they are significantly less than what you are currently handling. So like, for example, juggling 10 balls when really two of them are truly yours. And the last card, the knight, is talking about that inner drive that insists that you continue pushing forward. You are following your heart, but it's also in pursuit of a righteous cause. So be mindful of that. It's not just because you love them oh so much, it's because there's some a bit of a, you could call it a hero complex or codependent complex, being a rescuer or just feeling like guilty and responsible. There are different aspects of it. So really analyze your motivations for continuing and being in this dynamic the way you are. That is the reading for today. Well, I don't know about the rest of you, but I feel attacked. Thanks, <laughs> cards. Tukule is extremely straightforward <laughs> and it goes right to the heart of it i don't know about the rest of y'all but i feel a little attacked 
So if you would like to explore anything that came up for you in this reading more deeply, I do offer private readings through my Facebook page and my website, LaxanderClairvoyant.com. Dads, dads, dads. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I clicked and it like went to the wrong thing. My bad. We're good. All right. I was just going to say, now you can actually book your own appointment time without having to have a whole conversation about it. I know. It's fancy. Anyway, now it is time for the question of the day which is created by my love and relates to the numerology, which is all about the feels. All about the feels. And about starting over because it's a one day. Boom. Oh no, hold on. I was, I woke up late everybody, in case you were wondering why I've been uh, a little bit of a spaz. All right, my love. So the question of the day uh, got written, but not put on the stream. So there it is. There we go. I got it figured out. How do you maintain boundaries in your relationships? There it is. Sharing is caring. It's not just because we like caring from you, but the other people watching can read your comments and get some ideas for themselves. That's right. Sharing is caring, ladies and gentlemen. This is our share moment. So tell us, how do you maintain boundaries in your relationships? Uh, we're going to start with uh, the Dragon Master, our Dragon Master, Alex. Hey, Alex. Hey, Alex. Um, I've, been, I've been saying for the last couple of days, he's going to slowly start sneaking his way into the stream a little bit more. Um, but his answer is, I communicate my boundaries and let the other person know when they have crossed them. That's pretty straightforward. It's pretty straightforward and a very good thing to do. It's good to be straightforward so there's no confusion, no misunderstandings. If you're just like, this is what's okay, this is what's not. Also, by the way, this thing you did. No. This thing you did? No. <laughs> uh, so Sandy says, pick the right relationship. Oh key factor. Ask for what you want <laughs> and use love language. Hashtag tribe. Hashtag soulmate. I love all the hashtags. Sandy kills me. Um, I'm a modern psychic, so I'm all about the hashtags. Hashtags. <laughs> um, yeah, no, absolutely. Pick the right relationships. I know, that's, that's smart thinking. Nurture the right thinking. relationships. <laughs> I love, love how straightforward that is. Boundaries. No, just pick the right person. If you pick the right person, Obviously, you'll still have to sort things out, but it'll be a lot easier, and they'll actually respect your decisions. So, it always makes it easier when your partner respects the boundaries you've set. <laughs> Even if they do cross them, it's usually on accident. Absolutely. Uh, Anthony says, honesty and truth. Absolutely. you got to make sure you're being honest. You've got to communicate. You know, you can't just expect them to read your mind. I know we all like to believe that our partners know us well enough to be able to read our minds. But at the end of the day, no matter how connected you are, and I'm saying this even for Lysander and I, no matter how connected you are, if I don't tell Lysander that I'm having a hard day or I need space, I can't be mad at him when, you know, you want attention or you want to like, have dinner to together you. or... Sometimes I do read your mind, but it's not a constant, so, you know, she still has to communicate with me. And usually, I'm not sure why, the thoughts I pick up from you are always like silly things, like a movie you're thinking about or a song that's in your head. Well, yeah, that's why being a mind reader doesn't actually help either. Can't. Sad truth, even if your partner was a mind reader, like <laughs> myself, they can't actually pick up on when you're up the what they did wrong i mean sometimes i do know when you're upset you know if you're like no really i'm fine i'm like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well i'm you know i'm also i'm also guilty of being a girl in that way where it's like i'm fine i'm fine sometimes you don't have to be mind readers just kind of like <laughs> sure yes. you're fine <laughs> it being a mind reader does not help lysander one bit so stop <laughs> expecting it of your partners because even if they were 
I want to help. <laughs> Let's see. Anthony adds unconditional love. That is also an important part. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's give it a minute. Let's see if anybody else has anything to add. Uh, did I ask you how you? No. Oh. <laughs> how do you maintain your boundaries? Well, boundaries are uh, something that is kind of an ongoing thing I work with about myself. So, uh, mostly the way that I exert boundaries is within myself and moderating my own thoughts and feelings and energy so that I'm concerned with me and what's truly my responsibility to let other people manage themselves. And I, I communicate with you at times when I am feeling bothered and that's still something I'm working on as well. Are you just going to stare at me? <laughs> uh, she's typing the response to one of you guys. All right. Yeah. Well, like, you, you gotta, like, I'm the one multitasking. You just have to look pretty in front of the camera. I'm, like, answering people. I'm dealing with the scene changing. You can't, um, don't just other ways. Well, I think the idea of responsibilities is one of the biggest ways I've grown in terms of boundaries is I used to blame myself for, like, everything. Um, or believe the other person when, not, not Eliza, like past people, when they said <laughs> that things were my fault, I believe them. So you really have to know for yourself your own worth and what is in, is not in your power and your responsibility. It's very important. Don't let yourself be berated. It's not fun. I'm, I'm reading comments. Uh, let's see. Indigo says, I am good at communicating about boundaries, but I find but I find people tend to think I am too nice and push those boundaries, which causes her to close off completely. And then it makes people kind of feel like, oh, I thought she was a nice person. Well, <laughs> my initial gut reaction is not a nice one. It's just like, well, screw them. <laughs> Uh, it reminds me of a there's line There's no such from... thing as like a nice person. That's like them not really seeing you as a cohesive being who has multiple feelings other than nice mode. I'm like hyper irritated on your behalf. Yeah, uh, I love I love Sandy's response to this. Sometimes what might seem obvious to us isn't to others. Sometimes we have to lay it out for them. And if they don't respect our boundaries, we should call them out. If they don't respect them, walk. Yeah, those who truly respect and like and care about you as a whole person, not just nice mode you, will stick it out and will, you know, they'll work with you. And they'll, they're not just going to throw you away because you weren't nice for five seconds. Absolutely. This is my baby. That's right. Rush. You are worthy of all the love the universe has to offer. Don't, don't just accept the love that people give you out of their own selfishness. Let's see. All right. We're going to take one more comment Great. from James. I let everyone in, and if they want more, I just stop stop talking to them for a while until they need me. Once they need me, I let them know what they did wrong, and I ask them to try and help. <laughs> I ask them and try to help them to be better, so they so they can be with someone else. All right. And hashtag more cats. Oh my goodness, she is sitting here at my feet like, why isn't mama loving me? Katniss, come here, baby. Mama love you. Come here, sweetheart. We've oh, had to start, stretches. we've had to start waiting hey, until baby. the end of the stream to let cats in because a rush has been destroying my oh. set. Um. Katniss, 
Okay. All right. Not well, thank you all so much oh, for... love. Huh? Oh. Oh, it's, a. Uh, there's still more. I know. I was going to oh, say okay. thank you for oh, okay. answering. Okay, thanks for sharing. Sorry. Sorry. Thank you for answering and <laughs> sharing, everybody. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're shutting me sing. down today. No, you, you, you do you. Oh, you do you. are going to <laughs> say goodbye to everyone. No, I was saying thank you. All right. <laughs> thank you for sharing. <sighs> now do your thing. So now it is time for announcements. Woohoo! The Morning Metaphysical Report is made possible by viewers like you. Domo arigato. <laughs> thank you. If you would like to continue seeing the Morning Metaphysical Report, please like, follow, or subscribe to my page or channel or the MMR page or channel wherever you are watching this. On screen are the names of our lovely patrons on Patreon, so thank you for your support. If you would like to contribute to MMR and receive some cool perks and rewards while doing so, please visit our website at patreon.com slash morning metaphysical report. You'll also learn more about us and our goals. Uh, so with growing support, the morning report grows as well. There's exciting things ahead, such as a cooking and fitness segment. Alrighty. So, just have a happy cat here. Next, it, and finally, we will be casting a psychic protection around you for you to carry with you throughout your day and setting an intention for our day. All right, sweetie. Yeah. Just, okay. All right. <laughs> so if you would like this protection, just allow yourself to receive it. Don't worry, Vanity will deliver it to you. And you can see it there. Finally, we will be setting an intention for our day. So I invite you to set an intention for yourself at this time or to set my intention for you. Today is bringing us clarity, especially within our relationships. Today is bringing us an open heart love and safety and security within ourselves so that we can approach those we love around us with full wisdom and compassion for them and for ourselves. All will be well and all is well. We are grateful and so it is. And so it is. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's always a pleasure, and we hope that we will continue seeing you in the future. Be blessed. Be blessed, everyone. <laughs> Vision of cat. Hashtag more cats. Hashtag more cats. <laughs> Bye, everybody.